Okay. Perfect. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Well Man's Podcast. I'm really excited today. Brian and I have uh, another very special uh, physical therapist that's on with us. Her name is Farheen Patan. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we actually had the pleasure of having her husband on, Savar Patan. Um, and Farheen is very specialized because she, she deals, uh, she's considered a woman's health expert, but definitely deals with um, an expertise in pelvic floor dysfunction. And this is something that I've ran across a lot in my clinic. Um, Farheen was educated at uh, the Government Spine Institute in uh, Bana, Abanabad, India? Ahmedabad. Okay. <laughs> Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. But also did her uh, post-professional degree in physical therapy at St. Augustine, uh, Florida. Currently, she has a mobile practice, her and her husband, and they're local to the triad area. So this is why I love them, because I'm also in the triad area. And I just found out about them just um, a few months ago. So really excited to get them on and have uh, people use their services, because I, I just haven't heard of many physical therapists doing that and having a, a, a mobile practice. So it's really, it's really great to have somebody come to your home. Um, so anyway, we're really excited to have you on, Farheen. Is there anything that I, that I should mention? Yeah, no, I, I think you did pretty good. Thank you so much. Thank you for yeah. having me. Thank yeah, we're, we're thrilled. Yes. So I guess the, uh, the, the, the question that a lot of people probably want to understand is really what is, what is pelvic floor physical therapy? What do, you, what do you mean by that? And what are the conditions that go with that? Yeah, so usually, uh, you know, uh, pelvic floor therapist specializes in treating pelvic floor muscle. This is a muscle uh, in under your pelvis um, from tailbone in the back to the pubic bone in the front. And it supports the three main organs in women, uh, bladder, uh, uterus, and rectum. And in men, of course, bladder and rectum. And, you know, any dysfunction in this muscle can lead to leakage of urine, constipation, and pain in that area. So, a uh, a pelvic floor therapist usually helps in the function of peeing, poop, and sexual intercourse. Oh, okay. What about what about like uh, prolapse and stuff? Like pro organ pro organ prolapse. Yes. yes, organ prolapse also comes under pelvic floor dysfunctions. And you know, usually when the muscles and the tissue around it, uh, around these organs are weak, uh, your organs fall out, uh, which is called as. Uh, a pelvic organ prolapse right right and, yeah yeah and uh, you know depending on the level of prolapse uh, if it's not to uh, third grade and if it doesn't need surgery PT can help you strengthen your uh, muscles around it and help you train um, so you can prevent you can reverse the condition so many times yeah, I think a lot of people I, I mean uh, you know are not really that aware of these muscles and and what they do oh yeah that, yeah yeah sometimes i've seen that you know uh even though people have heard about kegels uh, and when i see my patients they've not been doing the treat the the same muscles they're not activating same muscles something we call is co-contraction they are either doing uh using like the um, adductor muscles like squeezing their knees or squeezing their butt along with it and not actually uh, doing the kegels exercise that they're supposed to do and so you know usually when we do internal examination that gives them the better idea that this is what the uh, exercise that they're supposed to do this is the muscle that they're supposed to contract what what are, can you explain what kegels are like what, because i know that that's a really important ex, uh exercise to do I, i'm aware of that but what what do you mean by kegels sure so before i uh, you know kegels um is an exercise where you activate your pelvic floor muscles what uh, we call is like say for example the cues i will say is like try to close the back passage or try to close the passages that are underneath in the uh, pelvic region, underneath in the uh, vulvar region. And uh, what you're gonna feel is, as you are uh, lifting that muscle, you will feel that a sensation of lifting. Um, but you know, the important thing that I wanna mention is not, Kegels is not the solution to everybody's problems. 
Sometimes if you're doing Kegels and it's increasing your concern, you probably have a tight pelvic floor muscle and you do not need to do Kegels at that time. So pelvic floor muscle is, is the dysfunction is mainly either hypotonic or hypertonic. So hypertonic means it's very weak and hypertonic means it's really tight. So if you're doing Kegels and it's a tight muscle, it's not gonna, it's very minimal range that you're contracting, it's not gonna help your condition. It's, it's gonna make it worse. So you, so you want to get it evaluated first to see if it's a hypertonic muscle or a hypotonic muscle. And then based on that, you will get your treatment. So, you know, just think, learning about it that, okay, if I do Kegels, it's going to help me and it's going to solve my problem. It's not true. Right. So how do you determine whether it's hypertonic or hypotonic? So, you know, when you come to a pelvic floor uh, therapist, what we do is we do an internal evaluation, which is inserting like finger through vagina um, in, uh, in vim, uh, women and uh, through rectum in male. Yeah. And uh, that will give us the idea of if your muscle is, you know, if there are any tender spots in it. Then we do a manual muscle testing, which gives us the idea how much strength and endurance of that muscle is. Then we, we check the breathing pattern and then see the relation of what your muscle is doing when you're breathing in and when you're breathing out. Also, you know, by looking at the anatomy, also you can see if that muscle is really clenched and tight. And right. so in that situation, we first go and do certain exercises, some manual therapy to release those muscles and to relax them completely, to bring the full range. And then we go for strengthening. So like, uh, so that will be an internal evaluation. Of course, it includes like external evaluation by your therapist too, where we will see the posture and, you know, external strength of the muscles around it. Right. How so are you in grading? Men, oh, go ahead. Yeah, how are you grading the strength um, with the MMT or the manual muscle test when you're in there? So there are different um, um, tests that you can use. And, um, you know, there is uh, Laycock. And um, so basically the strength, uh, I have done the course from Harmon and Wallace. And the, mm -hmm. that was a great test. I'm trying to think about its name, but I'm, uh, it's not coming in my mind right now. But the, the way it is graded is, you know, uh, the grade one is when you can just feel the flicker of the muscle. Um, and the grade two is, when, you know, only a slight uh, flicker, but it's not like from, in, it's not coming from interior wall um, or posterior wall, or, you know, it's just coming from one or one of the wall or one or two of the wall. You can't feel it like symmetrical uh, contraction from all the walls of vagina. Okay. And the third is that you might feel, again, it's, it might not be coming from uh, all, but there might be some slight movement that you feel going upwards. And then the fourth is you feel it from all the walls and there's some slight, uh, you know, upward uh, movement of the finger. And the fifth is like you feel complete strong contraction from all the walls and there's like good upward movement of the finger. That's okay, good. that's what you want, yeah. right? You yeah, want that's that, that. No. And that's what we want, yeah. And of course, like at that time, we also make sure that, you know, the surrounding muscles are not contracting like adductors or you're not squeezing your glute or you're not doing abdominal contraction. Okay. Yeah. So some of the symptoms I ran across with um, uh, my men and women, for my men, um, I get a lot of... Uh, like prostate issues or, or like where the men feel like they're sitting on a golf ball or something, have a lot of pain there. Is that a pelvic floor issue? It, it is. Now I treat women's usually, but yes, it is a pelvic floor issue. And, uh, you know, I've learned a lot about it and yes, that helps men uh, tremendously. Like a pelvic floor therapist who treats men uh, mm -hmm. can help them for sure. Right. Yeah. And then I, then in women, this is, this is this is like like a really frightened one of my patients where she sat down to pee and and basically when she sat down to pee her vagina like completely prolapsed. Yeah. That that's a weakness, right? Of the pelvic floor. Of the pelvic floor muscle and the tissue around it. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. And probably well, go ahead, Brian. When is it time to to basically seek your help? At what point is it just the pain or I know after pregnancy and after delivery people should often see a pelvic floor therapist? Is there another yeah. time or things that people know that, you know, this is happening, I should seek these services? Sure. So, you know, if they have, they pee on themselves laughing, uh, uh, running or working out or uh, maybe coughing, sneezing, uh, that's when they should seek out a uh, pelvic floor therapist. Uh, other than that, if you are going too often to the bathroom, uh, say for example, normal amount of time that uh, people should go to the bathroom is six to seven uh, times in a day in a 24 mm -hmm. hour period. Um, also, obviously varies depending on how much water you drink, but that's the normal uh, number. And uh, if you're going too often and you do not have to pee for at least seven seconds, and you're concerned about it, uh, that's something you should talk to your, you know, healthcare provider or seek out help from a pelvic floor therapist. Um, pain in the pelvic region or pain, um, you know, in the low back also after pregnancy, upper back pain in the pregnancy is usually I commonly see. Again, like I said, uh, pelvic organ prolapse, when you feel that there's something, you feel heavy, uh, in your vagina or when you uh, have to push it in after you go for bowel movement that's some, that is suggestive of that you might be having organ prolapse and a pelvic flow therapist can do the test and determine that um, also, other than other than delivery is there a specific surgery or um, yeah a surgery or other medical intervention that you commonly should see a pelvic floor therapist after uh, yeah, you know, even after pelvic surgeries, like uh, um, uh, the in the male and female, the uh, surgeries like your uh, uterine uh, tummy that they do, uh, that is like a lot of pelvic floor dysfunction that can happen after that. So that would be uh, like you know, even for every uh, uh, post uh, postpartum women, they should come see uh, the pelvic floor therapist. You know, mm -hmm. at least once. Um, and yes, after the surgeries too, uh, is I would uh, recommend that the uh, patients come and get it, you know, evaluated, yeah. especially if they have something going on, like they feel it's not normal for them. They should come and do uh, be seen by a pelvic floor therapist. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I missed out on urge incontinence too, which is very, uh, you know, common. Yeah, when uh, you have this is like you have urge to go to the bathroom and before you uh, reach the bathroom you pee on yourself that's an important that's also a condition where like you know your um, the trusor muscle the muscle of the bladder is very overactive and pelvic floor therapist can help you in that too by doing bladder training and a lot of therapeutic exercises hmm. yeah i see that a lot in in older men and women a lot where they cough laugh or sneeze and lose a little yeah. bit of urine. Yeah, yeah. So it's very common, you know, uh, there, we were going to discuss about the myths too. And so, you know, people just accept it because they think that just because they age, you no, know, they are going to have that weakness and it's common and it, they accept it in their lifestyle. But it's not, it's common, but it's not normal. And there is a solution to that problem. They need to seek out the help for it and they can see a good pelvic floor therapist who can help them. Yeah, and not jump right to surgery or whatever yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. I see that a lot. I see like like a lot of the pelvic floor dysfunction. Well, I, I'm, I don't think a lot of medical doctors realize what that it actually is pelvic floor dysfunction and that they there's a there's a, a non invasive yes. relative to them, a non invasive treatment for that, it. Yeah, that is absolutely first. yeah. And not and patients are not being referred. Uh, to pelvic floor therapists, which they should be. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very under the radar. If if you yeah. if you're not educated on it or you don't know pelvic floor therapists, you rarely hear about it. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But treatment does consist. I mean, so it's relatively non-invasive, where you're not doing a surgical procedure, but you are you are going into the internal cavities. You're going into the vagina. You may be going into the rectum on men to to manipulate the tissues or or whatever, give them treatment. Right. Yes, uh, yeah, definitely. A pelvic floor therapist will do an internal evaluation to treat you. Yeah. 
but it's not only the evaluation, right? I mean, a treatment oh, yeah, also. Yeah, for the treatment too. Like we do a lot of manual therapy if there's not, you know, tender spots in it and, and we palpate the muscles from inside. Like uh, there is this muscle obturator internus that you can palpate from inside. So basically so many patients who have back pain, uh, sometimes, you know, they see the therapist, like physical therapist too, and they don't relieve their back pain. But sometimes that muscle has never been internally treated. And, you know, there has, that has been just treated outside, from outside and not an internal evaluation, which your pelvic floor therapist can do and treat you from inside and outside. And you wouldn't be able to tell where that back pain's coming from without that internal evaluation, yeah. right? Yes. So me, me as an acupuncturist, like I, I always say, you know, I'm going to treat, I'm going to, you know, it, it looks like it's some type of muscle related thing. I'm going to treat you one to three treatments after that, you know, it should get better. If not, I have to refer out. It sounds like you, you know, that you or, or your husband or physical therapist would be a good referral to, to go right to, to get sure. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's fascinating because I think you could prevent a lot of these, um, uh, it, does it, in the lingo, I hear sling surgeries. It sounds like uh, they, they, you know, like for for bladder and stuff. Like they're going in there, and I don't, it sounds like a sling they're putting in internally. I don't know much about it, and they're holding up. Yeah, Not for really prolapse, they yeah, yeah, for prolapse, they usually use pastries. This is like a soft, flexible device that they place inside uh, through the vagina or uh, for a meal, I think, through the rectum, and they support those structures that are falling out. Um, and yeah, and sometimes they would do the open, you know, they would do an incision in the vaginal, uh, vaginal canal, and then they will, uh, support that, uh, structure for, through the sling or through a graft and that will help the, you know, it support it. And this is usually, you know, uh, I think every patient who has this should come to see a therapist pelvic therapists get the treatment and if it if they do not improve with it they can go for the surgery but usually people just go for the surgery and then they realize that oh they probably had that solution yeah and those that solution the surgery can cause a lot of other problems but even if you get the surgery wouldn't wouldn't uh you know seeing a, a pt person pelvic floor expert help also i mean yeah. even, even after you got the surgery okay yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, these surgeries can create a lot of tension in that tissue and pain and swelling. And so uh, definitely they should get uh, a PT, pelvic floor PT, even after the surgery. Yeah. Well, I think you look at it in the same way of like a total knee replacement, where after the total knee replacement, they basically rip through so many tissues. You kind of, one of the most important things is to get the quad the quadriceps muscle to fire. So it'd be fairly similar to that. So if they start ripping yeah. through those tissues, now you need to reorganize the situation, get everything to fire properly, which sure. should help you with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, getting that range back, getting it mm -hmm. to uh, work the way it was working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any contraindications to, like if you're getting treatment, um, I, I, and I'm thinking like maybe uh, – you get in treatment and you work out a lot, you know, and maybe if you're doing like a squat or a lunge or something, you're creating a lot of internal pressure internally. Is that, I mean, I would think that would kind of inhibit treatment a little bit. Am I correct in saying that? Uh, so it's you like know. if you're straining internally, like maybe if you're, if you're going to have a bowel movement or something and you're, you're pushing that, yeah. that, wouldn't that, especially if you have prolapse, it seems like that could make it worse. And that yeah, so usually, you know, when we treat, we do get, go through not only just like muscle strength, and but we also go through like good toilet habits. Yeah. Uh, and one of that would be main important for the constipation or just in general, any incontinence that you're going to, uh, that do not, you know, push. Right. Training is not good because it puts a lot of pressure on your pelvic floor muscle. Hmm. Right. Uh, and like you said, even in the uh, prolapse too, yes, you will have to uh, learn what is your uh, limit when if you feel that it's like putting a lot of pressure and you're having the symptoms, uh, you want to back, back out of it at that time because you want to make sure it's for strengthened. It's, in, right. it's not coming right. when you're doing it. So right. yes, it is 
uh, something that you know when we treat our patients we educate them a lot because uh, education does most of the work when they know about the condition when they and our goal is to get to the to the point where they can self-manage their condition so uh, that would be something we would go through like the activities that they are doing and uh, like when I was talking about like the uh, toilet habits too you know some people uh, who have urgent continence too they uh, they have most of them have this habit of the, like going just in case yeah so you know let's just go just in case if i need to go to the bathroom i'll just go right now right, but what right. happens is your bladder is like a uh, an elastic organ and if you keep on you know going to, when it's just filled to this level and you keep on going um it's just gonna lose its capacity to um expand and it's going to have a small capacity then. And then when it, it gets to that level, you will have the urge that you probably need to do, go to the bathroom. While normally your bladder has the capacity to fill to 400 to 600 ml of urine. So yeah. when it gets to a 300 ml, that's when you should feel that that's the normal urge in humans. And if you're not listening to your body, if you're not listening that this is the time that I need to go uh, and Either you go before that, like just in case, or you just don't uh, care about it and then you don't go, then it expands. So you have to listen to your body. And if you feel the urge, you should go, but you don't make a habit of just going every one hour or every two hours, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I would think, I mean, if, you, if you're struggling with constipation a lot, like there may be other treatments you know, that you may need to do in addition to pelvic floor therapy, you know, especially if you're prone to prolapse or whatever. And, I, and I'm just thinking, you know, off the top of my head, like, you know, the basics, like make sure your diet's good, make sure yeah. you're drinking plenty of water, make sure you're exercising, make, you know, maybe some magnesium. magnesium. Yeah. <laughs> magnesium, <laughs> our number one recommendation. <laughs> And also like, you know, breathing, breathing is uh, like holding or straining is not good. So, you know, breathing, when you breathe deep, breathe and relax your pelvic floor, your pelvic floor, constipation happens usually when your pelvic floor do not relax completely. Yeah. So you don't have, you have a tendency to hold it. You have, right. You keep it tight. So that's something that we work on uh, is relaxing those muscles. And we use biofeedback technique uh, which can be either meter or, you know, we have biofeedback uh, devices that we use. Mm -hmm. uh, and that gives, basically it's like controlling your functions. It gives you uh, a feedback that your muscle is tight and you need to still relax it. Right. So when the biofeedback um, device, you place the electrodes um, and that region and it gives the electrical activity from that muscle and if you would uh, like if it's connected to the computer screen you will see that you know you are that graph is up you're not able to relax it and by looking at it they will learn okay it's still up and i need to get it down and yeah. so th those are the techniques that we use for them to learn to relax Right. Uh, also like some yoga stretches and some like happy baby pose and you know the same thing they have to apply when they go to the bathroom is like learn to relax and then it will be easier and then they won't be straining and uh, create like uh, getting to the point where they will have organ prolapse right yeah Raheen, what about what about sexual function because I know with some men and women like by strengthening the pelvic muscles, will that enhance like like orgasm, sexual pleasure, that type of thing? Can it? Is there? Have you run across that with people? I've run across it in my clinic where the, some people have real issue with that. Yes, yes. And so usually, if they have pain with intercourse, you know, there is some uh, tender spots in the pelvic floor muscle or around, like in the adductor muscle, that might be some tender points. And, um, you know, again, the same thing we will, uh, when we train on, you know, uh, treat those muscles through a manual therapy and train them on relaxing those muscles that yeah. can help. And even uh, if they have weakness and they're not having the sexual pleasure, the strengthening those muscles, like I have had so many patients when they come for, uh, you know, incontinence and I've worked with them uh, for strengthening and like, and then they come and tell them like, my husband says like, 
he's like it has changed a lot and like i got a feedback from him that he's he's having fun now because yeah. i have more tight and like you know toned muscles right so right does definitely uh definitely makes a whole lot of difference um in your sexual life too yeah so it could enhance that for men and women if for men and women absolutely yes yeah that's that that's great the other question that i find fascinating i don't know if you have experience with this but i uh <laughs> Just before our talk, searching online, there's all kinds of devices online, like of, of weights you can search into the vagina to hold or squeeze mm -hmm. um, equipment. There's one person on Instagram she, uh, who talks about, you can see them holding on to like, a, 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 she has something inserted in her vagina and, she's hold, and it's strapped to a weight that she's dangling between her legs to, to, to tonify her pelvic floor muscle. Do, does that work? Is there something to that? I mean, that, yes, that was a very uh, you, much used in uh, before. Uh -huh. um, you can use it, but you know, um, yes, those are like strengthening different kinds of devices that you can use. But again, the same thing. You would want to get it checked what of it course. is before you want to go before and you do that. that yes yes because yes, you could possibly that. make things worse depending on what what's going on yes yeah. absolutely yeah 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 well, it's okay um the other thing is i so as far as men i know this is your your woman's health expert primarily but also can help men but i see a lot of men after like prostate surgery or or just older with the incontinence uh can't get an erection or you know, sexual pleasure is, is slim to none. It sounds like this could help them with all of the above too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it can. It can. Yeah. And nowadays I think a lot of men, uh, students and men therapists are also getting in this, uh, to help other men. Um, and a lot of uh, women, uh, pelvic floor therapists are also treating men and, uh, they have seen a lot of positive changes with it because, you know, the anatomy is, uh, pelvic floor anatomy is similar in both men and women. Right, and right. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, that's great. I'm, I'm thrilled you, I'm thrilled you and your husband are in, in town or in the triad area here. So it's, it's really cool. Um, yeah. anything else that we should talk about or go over? I've, I've got another one. I've got a question for you, yeah. Farheen. As far yeah. as you talked about like toilet habits and things like that, are there good habits or just tips that you've seen in your experience that the general population should know about when it comes to their pelvic floor health? Yes. So, you know, um, one thing would be like, do not strain. Other thing would be, do not use your cell phones or don't be distracted when you're going to the bathroom. <laughs> That's a good uh, one. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you want to focus on what your your body is doing, you know, because um, your brain, if it's not, if it's breathing, you're focusing, it is, it helps that process. So don't be distracted would be the other thing. That's so a I good point. I probably yeah. haven't taken a poop without my phone since like yeah. 2004 or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's my, that's my office. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that commonly happens everywhere. And that's something I tell my patients a lot, like, you know, don't be distracted doing it. Uh, the third thing would be, uh, you know, um, use the squatty party because squatty party helps that position of the intestine such that it can. One of the greatest inventions in the world, the squatty yeah, party. <laughs> party. <laughs> it's helped so many people with constipation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, you know, when you go to public toilet, people hover on the toilet and that is not a good idea because when hmm. you hover, you're not relaxing your pelvic floor muscles. And normally when you want to go for a uh, bowel movement or uh, peeing, you want to relax those muscles. So if you're forcing it in that hover position, it's, it's creating a negative effect on it um yeah uh, uh, and other than that you know people think that when they drink water or they when they drink fluid they can include like carbonated drinks or sugar uh drinks and that is not um what they should do because those are like bladder irritants even acidic citric fruits are bladder irritants and that that is going to create a negative effect on your bladder it's going to concentrate your urine and make it 
course. So, you okay. know, uh, pure uh, water as much as possible is something that you should drink. And uh, there are various different articles on how much water you should drink. But, uh, you know, I have this uh, where um, I think it is three, yeah, National Academics of Science and Engineering uh, suggest that 15.5 cups of fluid, which is 3.7 liters for a healthy men. And for healthy women, it should be 2.7 liters. And some of the um, different articles that I read were like you know you divide your weight in pounds into half and then whatever comes in uh, is something you should drink in ounces right so right. for example it's 160 pounds you should drink 80 ounces of water yeah so yeah drinking lots of water and uh good fluids is important yeah, yeah it's, it's like a cure-all with the magnesium the water exercise and stuff like that and most people don't drink a whole lot which is amazing yeah. Yeah, and when we do bladder diaries, we do something that is called bladder diaries where we see how much water and what all they're eating and drinking during the day and how many times they're going in the bathroom and how much they are urinating uh, for three days. And then most of the people get the idea, oh, I was thinking I was drinking enough, but then you get an idea that, oh, you're not drinking enough. Right. Go through that process of yeah. that yeah. So, yeah. so with that, you'll actually measure the urine excreted? Yes, you will measure the urine. Uh, there are different ways of it. The best way is to measure it with the cup, measuring cup, uh, because um, sometimes, you know, so the other way is like you can um, count for the seconds, but sometimes, you know, the flow of urine would be different in different so people, so you won't get the best idea. So measuring the urine is something I suggest to my patients. And that gives them an idea, exact idea of how much they are, you know, how many times they're going and do they need to go. If, if it's like 100 ml or if it's like 80 ml, where probably they didn't need to go to the bathroom at the time and they could have waited. So that gives us a very good idea of how much they're drinking and how many times they're going. And, you know, so that we can do the bladder training and help them reduce the amount of time they're going to the bathroom. If, if they're going like more than seven, 10, some of my patients, they like, when they come to me, they're going like 25 times in the bathroom. They're spending most of the day in the bathroom because they just have, this is their lifestyle and they just accept it. Like, well, that's what I was doing and I'm used to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's great information that you should be excreting the 400 to 600 milliliters. And because even I, I drink about a gallon of water a day and I feel like I go to the bathroom quite a bit when you said about, I think six to seven times is when you should go. And I was thinking I might be going too much. And I'm definitely one of those people who is uh, like, oh, I'll go just in case I get to the Whole Foods and I got to pee. Yeah. And it, that's a perfect, just that that can be just as negative as kind of that, that holding your bladder for a little too long, yeah, like both of yeah. them. Absolutely. Like, like, you know, uh, you know, sometimes when we go to travel and we're outside, that's okay, but don't make it a habit because then right. it, your bladder shrinks if you're going too many, too often that your bladder thinks that that's your, that's its capacity. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Farheen, can you just, you mentioned the squatty potty. Could you just mention briefly why that that's a good thing um, and what it does? Yeah, so you know, in the squatty potty, your uh, knees are a little bit higher than your hips, and you're bending forward, and you're you're supposed to rest your forearms on your knees, yeah, uh, or on your thighs. And what this uh, creates is it creates an open position for your intestine because if you're sitting upright, it kind of create a kink in your intestine, and so it does not in in, in your uh, yeah. Um, in the in that canal, it doesn't create the opening. So this position, squatty body, will create a good opening of your uh, canal, and that will easily, you know, your bowel movements can easily uh, uh, come out. Your bowel can easily come out. So. Yeah. So you just it's, so it's easier to pass to pass your stool and all that, and it's it, you're getting back to the way. You know, before we modernized us as humans, the way we would use the bathroom, where we'd go into a sitting squat, which completely yes. opens the that up. Position for yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so just and so. By the way, the the squatty potty is just all you're doing is like you said, elevating your knees up when you're sitting on the toilet, 
or yes. wherever. So and so, so it's, it's, just, it's like a small footstool that comes uh, and you can place your foot on it, and so that elevates your knee up higher than your hips. Right, right, and it, and think about all the problems it can solve. Constipation for one. Uh, you're not pushing as much, so maybe you'll prevent hemorrhoids. It definitely is going to help the pelvic floor. Um, you know, digestive function is going to be better. Simple, a simple solution to a whole lot of problems that, yeah. you know, uh, doctors prescribe tons of medications and laxatives for <laughs> when it, all you need is a, a little plastic footstool, so to speak. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So any anything else we should go over? Uh, I think we've been, uh, yeah, I think I would want to make sure that we do discuss some of the myths, if that's okay with you. Yes, absolutely. Because, yeah. uh, you know, um, like we talked that incontinence uh, is normal after childbirth, is something people think, or as they age. But exactly, it's, you know, 13 million people in the U.S. They have incontinence and please do not accept it as your lifestyle. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, common, but it's not normal. And you do have a solution to it. To seek right. Out. Yeah. Um, again, uh, like pelvic pain and pain with intercourse after vaginal delivery is considered normal. You know, after at least for six weeks, yes, you will have some discomfort and pain. But, you know, if it continues, you do want to seek out help because then it's not pain is never normal. Right. Yeah. Uh, also, some people think that a cesarean section will prevent all the dysfunction of the pelvic floor. So. Cesarean section is like cutting your abdomen, cutting the uterus, and you know oh, wow. it cuts the transversus abdominis muscle, which plays an important oh. role in um, the core function of the body and helps pelvic floor. So it's not going to prevent the pelvic floor dysfunction. So even after cesarean section, you will have you will have you know incon you may have incontinence and pain, and so this is very common. Like so many people think that cesarean section will prevent it, but it won't. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I didn't even know that they cut through the transverse abdominis. I guess I, I figured, but that's that's definitely pretty severe. Yes, yeah, yeah, because it's like you know abdominal surgery; they cut yeah. through it. As, uh, yeah, yeah, it does affect your. Um, and they're doing that a lot too, for yeah. me, right? I mean, it seems like doctors. We more and more people are doing cesarean when they may not necessarily need to. Which yeah. Is, which is, which is yeah. That is yeah. That is true. Uh, also, I think we already discussed this, like, you know, health concerns are related to weakness. It's not always weakness in the pelvic floor. There can be tightness. And so you do want to get it checked before you are going just for Kegels. Mm -hmm. And so I think now, I think I've covered the important points. Are there, well, are, are there any uh, prescription meds commonly prescribed for pelvic floor dysfunction that you know of? Uh, there, I mean, there are, but you know, it's not in our, um, I, I don't know, prescribe any, anybody, any of those medications, but yes, for incontinence, uh, there are, uh, medications that are, I guess for pain, you got pain meds and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It's not going to solve the problem, but may, may help with the symptoms. Yes. Either way, you know, I tell my, if you're going to take a prescription med, like get to the root cause. And it sounds like taking care of the pelvic floor is going to get to the root cause for, for any dysfunction related to that instead of taking a med. And yeah. just, to be, just to be clear, you need to see a pelvic health therapist to get this level of care. You can't just walk in and see any physical therapist, correct? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Not all of the therapists are, uh, you know, trained to do it. So a pelvic floor therapist who knows they, and who can do internal evaluation will be able to help. You. I think the great thing about your price too, I mean, you know, that, that's it. You know, you're going in possibly the rectum, vaginal canal for evaluation and treatment. And guess what? You don't, you, you don't, you know, you can do this in the comfort of your own home. The, you know, you, you can go to somebody's house, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we go yeah, to your right. house. So yeah, that is, an, you know, uh, one thing that people don't feel com comfortable talking about in the clinics. And that is something we realize that, you know, going to their home will help them be, feel more, more comfortable and they can talk about it. Right. Yeah, yeah that sounds great. So and the, the one thing I want to mention also, so when we were talking about, uh, you know, the, the meds or whatever, 
um, I briefly mentioned magnesium. Magnesium is a great natural muscle relaxer for like chronic tightness or spasm in there. That, that can help. Again, we're still talking about symptom management though. You want to get to the root cause, but that, that's a non-invasive pill, so to speak, that you, that you can take. Um, and then uh, are there any like at the gym or exercises people can think about doing besides Kegels that may help? Uh, so, you know, if you are um, working out, you want to make sure that when you are doing any exertion, you breathe out and, okay. yeah, so that you're not creating a bulk salva maneuver and you're not putting a lot of pressure on your pelvic floor muscles. Also, you know, um, there are good lifting techniques, like if you're, if you're doing lifting, uh, you want to make sure that you are uh, activating your uh, pelvic floor muscles and your transversus abdominis muscle uh, before you lift and and you're breathing out at that time when while you're contracting those muscles and then you can let go so right. those, those are the important tips that i would give when, the, when if people are working out in the gym and doing lifting right and i just so everybody knows i actually i've been in the gym actually didn't see it happen, but I actually taught the person where doing they were doing a heavy squat and prolapse their rectum from that. Mm. I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy from the, the the strain and the pressure that you're putting internally. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So it's in, it's important to get good it's left and technique. Learn the right technique of doing those exercises. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In our core stabilization podcast, we talked a lot about using the transverse abdominis and that. So if anyone wants to go listen back to that, it has a lot of this similar information to branch off further with that. And I love the exhale with the exertion. That's what I tell all my like personal training clients. We're always exhaling with the exertion, exhale and exert at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah like, they, people don't realize that, you know, when they're doing it, they're holding their breath, even like mm -hmm. my pain. I would look at them and like, you're holding your breath. Like, no, I'm holding your yeah. breath. <laughs> so you have to kind of train that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else we should go over? I think so. We're good. Well, thank you so much, Farheen, for being on. I mean, I, I, I really, I want, my wife and I really want to go out with you and your husband at some point. I'm trying to set that up for, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I guess the way that people can get in contact with you is through your website, which is www.pp, P is in people, so pptaw.com, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, thank um, you so much. Yeah. Any other way they can get in contact with you that I should tell yeah, them? They can, they can call 336-929-1056 um, okay. or they can also email, and that is on our uh, website too. They, I have like our email address and um, the contact information on the website too. There's Facebook page, Instagram page of personalized physical therapy and wellness. Right. So, yeah. And they don't need a, you guys don't need a referral from a medical doctor, right? Yeah, we do not, you do not need physical, a North Carolina is a direct access state. So we do not need a referral to see patients. So you can okay. just call us and, you know, we will be able to reach to them within 72 hours. And you guys, what, what's the insurance thing with you guys in the state? Do you take insurance or not? We do not. So we do super bill. Uh, oh, okay. It's kind of like what I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're mainly cash based, but if uh, they can submit to the insurance later on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank Anything you. else? Yeah. No, thank you. Yes. Phenomenal education for me. And I'm super interested in your guys' business practices as well. So this is, this is great thank for you. me. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah. Thanks so much, Raheem. Uh, give Savar my love and hopefully we'll see you, see you guys soon. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully we'll meet. Um, yeah. face to face <laughs> yeah sure sure okay. take care right, bye everyone we'll talk next week